one, three, five. That sounds like music theory. This is gonna be fun. Hi, my name is Paul Davis, and this is episode three of a series in which we learn the basis of music theory. And I highly recommend you watch the first two episodes about learning the notes and the major scale first before starting on this video. And in this lesson, which is broken up into two videos, we'll talk about how chords are being built and constructed and played on the guitar. A chord is a group of notes played together, mostly three or more. And the most used chords are called triad, which includes the major and the minor chord. And those triads are built using only three different notes. But Paul, when I play a G major chord, I'm playing six notes, right? Well, you're playing six strings, but are they six notes? Well, thank God we watched the first video, so we can name each note we're playing in the G major chord. From low to high, this is a G note, a B note, a D note, and G again and a B again, and a G again. So we've got some notes who are doubled. And the only three notes, unique three notes we play, are G, B, and D. And then we got G, B, and a G again. So G, B, D, three unique notes make the chords G major. And the same applies to every major and minor chord. Even diminished, augmented, sus2 and sus4, those chords only made up of three different notes. You can double every note as much as you want, but that doesn't change the chord. Now, let's make a major chord ourselves. Let's take a look at the C major chord, for example. Now, we have to take a look at the C major scale for this. We need three notes, and the magic three notes of a triad always are the one, the three, and the five. Remember that, one, three, five. And this is where the functions from episode two come in handy, because these are the functions I'm talking about. The first, the third, and the fifth. The one is the C. The three is the third note from the C major scale, being an E. And the five is the fifth note from the major scale, being a G. So now we found out that the C major chord is built up from the notes C, E, and G. So if we shortly want to check if our conclusion is right, let's find out the C major chord. So we start on a C, that's right. The following string is an E, a G, okay, a C again, and an E again. So that's right, we were right, C, E, and G. Cool, if you get this, you're destined to becoming a theoretical mastermind. So now let's try and make a G major chord, but instead of doing it on paper or on the screen, now let's try to make it on the guitar itself. So G major, that means we gotta start on G. Doesn't matter which G, but we take this one from now. And now let's play the major scale up for five notes. One, two, three, four, five. Frets three, five, and then on the A string, two, three, five. And that is the same for every major scale, that beginning. One, two, three, four, five. Do, 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 do. The functions are one, two, three, four, five. So we need to have the one, the three, and the five of that major scale. So the one, not the two, but the three. So one, three, and then we skip the fourth, and we go to the five. One, three, five. So those are the notes we need to build the G major chord. G, B, D. And this pattern is quite magical because you can play it everywhere. So let's say we move it to D over here. Those are the three notes we need for the D major chord. Let's say we do it over here at the A string, fret 7. Those are the three notes you can use for the major chord of E. You can even start on the 12th fret of the B string, for example. And those are the three notes you use building a B chord. Okay, we go fast, but now take a look at minor chords, because there is one big difference between major and minor, and that is the third. The major chords all use a so-called major third. But in minor, that third is being flattened by one semitone, so one fret lower. So if you take that same G major triad from before, do, 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 the third, which was the B, needs to be lowered by one semitone. So let's do that. From fret two, we move it to fret one. If you play these notes, G, B flat, D, those notes 
are the ones we need to have to build the G minor chord. So if you put a flat symbol in front of the function, so the three, function three in this example, you just lower it by one semitone. So now let's put this into practice. For example, the A major chord over here. We all know this is an A major chord. Let's name the notes quickly. A, E, an A again, a C sharp, and an E. And the three notes we need for an A major are a, C sharp, E. So that's correct. The A is the 1, the C sharp is the 3, A, 3, and the E is the 5. So if you want to make this chord minor, we need to change the 3rd into a minor 3rd. So the 3 becomes a flat 3. So the 3 in this chord shape is on the B string, fret number 2. This note, C sharp. So now we can change the major chord into minor by lowering the third to a minor third. So fret two becomes fret one. So maybe you already know these shapes, but now we did it theoretical. So we changed the A major to A minor by just lowering the third, the major third into a minor third. And that note decides if the chord is major or minor. A minor third or flat three is the minor interval and the major third or the three is the major interval. And we can do the same with all chords. Just lower the third and it becomes a minor chord. Let's take E major. And this takes some practice, but I know the third of this chord is over here, my index finger, the G sharp. Because one, three, five, E, G sharp, B. And the notes of this chord are E, B, E, G sharp, B, and E. So there's one third and it's fret one on the G string. So if we lower the third, it becomes an open string, a G string, and a G note. So we made a G from the G sharp, turning E major into E minor. Sometimes this creates an impossible shape. That's why some open chords don't have a minor version of it. So let's take C for example. If we want to lower the third, we need to lower two notes of the shape because this shape incorporates two thirds. So the notes from C major, as we discovered before, are C, E and G. And the E is the third. And the E is over here on the D string and on the high E string. So this shape has two thirds in the chord. And if you want to lower the thirds, we need to first lower the note on the B string from fret two to one. Okay, that is possible. But now we have the high E string and we can't lower that fret because we're already playing an open string. So you could theoretically play it like this, fret three and one and zero and one and omitting the first string, but it's not a real practical shape. You can better play C minor like this. Okay, before this goes over your head, I'm stopping the video at this point so you can do some experimenting with it. My advice, start with making a D chord, for example, the notes used in a D chord, and then turn it into a minor, and then play it on a guitar as well. There are always multiple ways to approach this. You can do it on the guitar. One, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five, one, three, five. There are so many ways to visualize a chord, but you can just play a shape you already know and analyze why this is the major shape, because you probably already know the D chord. And now you can analyze why this is the D chord and which note is which function. So if you change D to D minor, what happens? So this was a short video about a very interesting topic and I could go on for ages, but videos that go on for too long often have too much information to comprehend. So this was part one. Let it sink in, enjoy, and I'll see you next video with part two of the chord series where we discuss bar chords and sus chords and how this translates into those shapes. All right, have a wonderful day. See you next time with the next video. And if you like this video, make sure to do whatever you want because it is your life after all. Cheers.